Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and um, I'm filming this this intro to the bread in a car recipe uh, that I did yesterday. Um, I went to go and edit the video here tonight at this hotel, um, and it, the intro just didn't come out. There's a glitch or something, so um, I don't have the, the intro that I filmed in the car. Uh, the recipe um, was a challenge for me. I'm traveling, and we're a military family. I'm traveling to go back and see the doctors that I've, I've seen for a long time um, to have a checkup with them. And um, I, it's not leisure travel here during COVID. Um, it's necessary medical travel. So um, I wanted something that would kind of keep my mind occupied and, and distract me on a long drive. So uh, homemade bread in a car was it. And I did get an edible loaf of bread. Um, in the car, it took me about 10 hours and the recipe is pieced together all day. There were blizzard conditions during the day. I kept stopping at rest stops to work on the bread, um, but it, it came out and it was it was a fun thing to do. And I hope, um, I hope you enjoy the video as much as uh, I enjoyed making that bread. Okay, so we're ready to make the bread dough. And I'm not saying that this is going to be easy. <laughs> I haven't done this before. Um, but, but we're gonna see how it goes. I'm actually going to use um, the bowl of the little crock pot um, to mix up the dough in because I, I don't have another bowl with me. And then I'm, I'm hopefully gonna put it back out on a plate. Um, for the milk, I'm using evaporated milk and I have my little, um, it's a P51 can opener, uh, my little travel can opener um, to get the milk out. I'm gonna shake that up a little bit. And then for the other stuff, this is, I have a bag of food and I use like a, a big jar and the jar holds anything that's like squishable. Um, I have little Nalgene containers. They're like little travel toiletry containers. This one, you can put food in them too, they're food safe. Um, this one contains yeast and this is in active dry yeast. This is not instant yeast. Um, and then we have uh, some honey. This is just um, just local honey. And then we have salt. Uh, this is real salt. You could use whatever salt you have on hand. I will close that back up. And you see I've got, you know, like like fig newtons and stuff in here that, that would get squished if they were just put in the bag. Um, so I am going to use my can opener. My regular recipe uses, I've never made the recipe quite this small. So my regular recipe uses, um, sorry, uh, my regular recipe uses um, four plus four cups plus one tablespoon. I didn't bring a liquid measuring cup, so we're going to kind of fake it with the regular measuring cup. Try and get this going. And I am going to use only the evaporated milk. I'm not going to reconstitute the evaporated milk because I can't use the rest of this, um, and it's, I, I just don't want it to go to waste, so we're just going to use evaporated milk only, and I'm just going to add a little extra couple splashes in there to equal a tablespoon. I'm going to wipe out my cup, um, and that was just about the entire can. I'm probably going to reconstitute this and, and just drink it as a beverage, so I'm not um, so I'm not wasting it. I do have to add the honey. Um, I'm I'm not. I do have a teaspoon measure, but I'm I'm not going to bother measuring the honey. The, it's pretty cold here. Um, I'm actually in in North Dakota, and it's it's winter, so you can imagine how cold this stuff gets because it, it hasn't been near the heater in the car. Um, we're just going to put a little bit more. That should be good. Try and carefully put the lid on this. And then I'm going to swirl it around to mix it. I'm going to plug in, because I'm using active dry yeast, I have to bloom the yeast and I need relatively warm uh, liquid to be able to bloom the yeast. So I'm going to be um, plugging in the crock pot. Um, it also needs to melt the honey a bit. The honey doesn't want to dissolve. I'm going to plug in the crock pot and I'm going to drive down the road uh, for a little while, probably about half an hour, and then 
um, take this off and I'll, I'll sprinkle the yeast on and take the lid off, sprinkle the yeast on. Of course, I won't do this while I'm driving. Don't worry, I'm gonna pull it over at a rest stop or something. Sprinkle the yeast on, um, let it sit for about 10 minutes um, without the crock pot going. And then um, I'll be back and I'll show you. Hi, I'm back. I've stopped again. And um, I'm just going to show you uh, the crock pot back there. Pardon the mess, please. <laughs> um, it's been warming um, for about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, the honey has dissolved, the evaporated milk is warm. It's like a warm bath water temperature. Um, you technically want it to be between like 100 and 110 degrees, but warm bath water temperature will work. You just don't want it too hot because you'll, you'll kill the yeast. Um, I'm going to add one teaspoon of yeast sprinkled over the top. And I'm also going to add two tablespoons of butter to this. Um, and you know, I actually might only do one tablespoon because I'm using the evaporated milk. I'm sorry, I'm shaking a bit like it's, um, the car is actually like rocking back and forth. It's super, super windy today. Uh, there was, there's a blizzard here and we're kind of on the back end of that blizzard. Um, so I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon of, of butter. And then um, I'm going to be adding, um, let's see, it'll be two teaspoons of active dry yeast. Um, and I will be back to um, show you how that looks after the yeast has bloomed. I'm just showing you how much uh, butter I plan to add. It's it's just about this much. I'm I'm just eyeballing it. Um, you don't really have to add the butter if you don't want to. Um, when we when we add the um, the salt and the flour, um, I might add a little bit more butter, like work it into the dough. Um, but I I think it'll be fine, um, mostly because I'm using whole evaporated milk and that has a significant amount of fat in it. Okay, so I'm just quickly showing you, you know, the, this used um, about a third, quarter to a third of the yeast that was in that little container. And I'm doing two teaspoons of yeast and I am just very carefully reaching over and sprinkling it over the top. I'm going to leave this crock pot unplugged um, because it's pretty warm and the crock itself is nice and warm so it'll maintain that temperature. I am going to put the lid back on um, just so there's no chance that it's gonna splash while I'm driving. Okay, we're back and it's been, it was a little longer because I couldn't find an exit. I'm, I'm in kind of a rural area. Um, and the yeast has bloomed and I'm ready to add the flour to it. Um, I'm going to be adding um, two and a half cups of flour. I only brought a half cup measuring cup. So, um, I'm going to be adding five uh, half cup measures of this. Um, the The butter has has melted, the yeast has bloomed, the honey has mixed into the evaporated milk, and I'll be back and show you uh, what that looks like. Okay, so I'm back. Sorry, I have mixed in uh, two and a half cups of flour here. Um, you see, I've got the lid over here, and um, yeah, there's a lot of flour on my steering wheel and everything now. Uh, so I'm going to stir this in. I'm going to try and stir it as much as I possibly can because I don't have a way of washing my hands. Um, I do have some gloves and I'm going to put the gloves on um, when I'm kneading it so I don't have to wash my hands, but I don't really want to get, like, lose a lot of this dough onto the gloves. So I'm going to stir this a bit more and then I will put the gloves on and start kneading. Um, I am going to knead it on a paper plate because I don't, um, I don't think I can knead this in the bowl. I don't think that would work out very well. Um, so I will be, uh, I'll be back um, and show you how it looks once I have kneaded the dough. Um, I do want to say that once I've kneaded the dough, I'm going to use a couple of damp paper towels to wipe this out and then I'm going to butter it and let it rise in this crock. Um, I don't have another um, bowl or anything. I forgot to bring any kind of mixing bowl, um, which I don't really need on this trip for anything except this uh, this experiment here. Um, so uh, it, it will just, uh, this is like a one pot bread, but it's a little obnoxious to do just because we have to, uh, I have to keep, um, uh, keep cleaning out the, the crock. Um, I'm going to be uh, kneading this and I'll, uh, I'll be back and show you how that looks. 
Okay, so the bread is coming together. Um, it is a bit of a mess. Um, I'm trying to knead this on a paper plate on my lap in the driver's seat of my car. Um, but it's come together enough where I, I can take the gloves off. The gloves are really awkward. They were just those like those super like filmy gloves. I just use them when I pump gas so I don't get like gasoline on my hands. Um, uh, cause we have, you know, we have little kids. I don't want to be touching their toys and stuff. Um, if I have, if I have gas on my hands. Um, so it, it's come together. I need to keep kneading it. The gluten's not developed nearly enough, um, for this to, <clears throat> to cook up, to come up with a nice loaf. Um, so I'm going to keep going with that. Um, and then clean out, clean out the crock, butter the crock, and I'll, uh, I'll be back and show you that. So here's how the dough looks with all the kneading done. Um, this is my own, just to give you an idea of, of the size of this. Um, this is my own bread recipe. I usually make it um, so enough so it makes 24 baseball size rolls. Um, I have another video up that, that, shows, um, that shows the recipe being made as a full recipe in a stand mixer. Um, this, I'm not sure if, if it's the, the fact that I used um, non-reconstituted non evaporated milk um, and that was just not enough water for the recipe um, or what, but this came out a lot, lot more dense than it normally does and it doesn't really have the nice springiness that it usually does. Um, it is my own recipe, um, so I, I've made it, I don't know, hundreds of times um, in the past 15 years or so. And this is not how it normally looks. It's normally nice and smooth and um, and has a little bit of a spring to it, but um, we'll, we'll see how it comes off, um, you know, how it bakes up. I, I think it's, it's maybe gonna come out a little denser and not have that nice fluffiness that it normally does. Um, the color of the dough is just beautiful, and I think that's a combination of using that evaporated milk um, as well as using that nice um, Irish butter that, um, that gave it um, a nice a nice color and hopefully it'll give it a nice a nice taste um, once it's baked I will put some butter on top to keep the crumb nice and soft so I'm going to uh, get this set up uh, for its first rise and I'll be back and show you that all right it is in its crock and buttered and lid on and sitting as close to the uh, floor heat vent as I can get it so we're gonna give this about an hour and a half and uh, come back and, and see see how it looks and if it's ready to put in a crock pot to bake. So this just to give you an update on how this is doing. Um, I had it on the floor but I was running the, the heater and it was getting pretty warm even though it's very very cold here right now. Um, so I moved it up uh, to the, the passenger seat and I have the seat heater on uh, to, to kind of keep this nice and warm. Uh, and it's covered up with a towel again to, to keep the heat going. I don't want to take the lid off and, and let any of that, that warmth out, but it is, it is rising. It's been over an hour, um, and it's taking a lot longer to rise than normal. Usually I use the, uh, the bread proof cycle on my, on my oven, and, um, this is just taking a bit longer. So I'm thinking it's going to need at least another hour, and it, it is rising quite a bit, so, I think what I'm going to be doing with this, I do have one of those like little hot logic ovens that, that plug into the 12 volt heater. And I think I'm going to, to divide the dough in half and I'm going to bake half of it in that, try and bake half of it in that hot logic oven and then the other half um, in this mini crock pot. And we'll see how that does. Um, the dough is looking better than it did when I first kneaded it, I will say. Um, and I, I don't think I will be even punching it down for the second rise until it's reached the lid. And I don't know how much longer that'll take, but uh, hopefully hopefully not too much longer here. I'll be back to uh, show you how that looks once it's fully risen. So the bread didn't rise quite as much as I thought it would. Um, I gave it about two and a half hours and it's still you know, it's, it's soft and it did puff up, but it didn't quite double in size. Um, I think that the evaporated milk, um, there just, there wasn't as much um, liquid in there uh, because I used the evaporated milk without reconstituting it. Um, it didn't have as much liquid as it should have. So I'm at my hotel and I've plugged it in. Um, it's starting to puff up. I have a feeling it's gonna take several hours to actually bake up, um, but but we'll see how it goes. Um, I will uh, show you how this uh, comes out uh, when it's when it's finally baking. Um, 
and we'll try and check on it somewhere in the middle. Okay, so this has been baking for about two hours in this crock pot, and by baking, I mean it's hot and it's cooking it. Um, it's not a dry baking like it would be in an oven. This is, is almost steaming it. Um, it. It does look like it's done on the bottom, but the top is still uncooked dough. So what I'm going to do is kind of lift this out with a spoon and flip it over and hopefully the top side can get uh, fully cooked. So I just wanted to show you how this looks. I'm kind of in the middle of um, flipping this over. The bottom is completely done. It's actually a little bit overdone, but it's very hot. Okay, so I'm just kind of pushing that down. It's not bad. Um, maybe the very edges will be a little bit um, overdone, but I think it'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna leave this for probably about another 45 minutes with the lid on to trap the heat because crock pots um, don't really work well if they don't have the lid on. And we'll leave that. Um, the bottom is nice and crisp and dry, which is surprising. I thought it would be kind of soft, um, but we'll see how it comes out. Um, I'm gonna give this about, about another 45 minutes, maybe an hour, and it should be completely done. So I just wanted to show you how this looks. I'm kind of in the middle of um, flipping this over. The bottom is completely done. It's actually a little bit overdone, but it's very hot. Okay, so I'm just kind of pushing that down. It's not bad. Um, maybe the very edges will be a little bit um, overdone, but I think it'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna leave this for probably about another 45 minutes with the lid on to trap the heat because crock pots um, don't really work well if they don't have the lid on. And we'll leave that. Um, the bottom is nice and crisp and dry, which is surprising. I thought it would be kind of soft, um, but we'll see how it comes out. Um, I'm gonna give this about, about another 45 minutes, maybe an hour, and it should be completely done. Okay, so the bread is done. Um, this has taken longer than any bread I've ever made with the exception of like those no need overnight breads. Um, but all total, um, from when I started um, to now that it's completely finished, we're talking 10 hours. Um, part of that was the fact that it's it's cold and I had it, it rising in the car. Um, but also baking it in a crock pot, which took several hours. I've unplugged the crock pot and I did bring a butter knife, which I conveniently forgot to bring into the hotel. So you can see the top of it has baked now. It's not super evenly baked, but it did bake. I also, of course, forgot to bring in a plate, which is, which is just great, but <laughs> it's still, it's okay. It's very, very hot, um, but it is, you know, it's thoroughly baked. Um, the top of it is browned, but it's soft on top just because, um, you know, it's a crock pot is not an oven and it's not going to bake the same as an oven. I'm going to use my spoon and try and kind of, kind of open this up and, and see how it looks inside. It doesn't look bad actually. You know, this, this came out better than I thought. It is pretty dense. Um, as far as, as any kind of loaf of bread goes, um, it's much denser than a sandwich loaf, um, or even like a French bread or anything like that. It's just, it didn't really rise. I kind of, you know, I kind of faked some of the recipe. It wasn't the regular recipe that I use. I used evaporated milk and everything instead, but you know, it, it's bread. It smells delicious and I'm going to try some. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, it needs some butter. It has a little bit of like a sourdough kind of a flavor to it. And I think that's because it had that really long rise. It had that like five hour, no more than that, more like seven hours of rising. Um, and I think that that just allowed it to ferment so long that it, it took on like a sourdough sort of a flavor. Um, which is fine, you know, it's okay. I'm gonna have some of it and then um, save some of it for tomorrow and um, have it, you know, on, on the road again, probably um, with some canned tuna or canned chicken that I have with me and I have like some little mayo packets from, from Chick-fil-A that I'll, I'll mix that up with. Um, so that 
that is my road trip bread and I'd like to thank you for watching.